Bridges are incredibly important to travel in the U.S., connecting areas that would otherwise be separated from each other. This greatly reduces travel time between locations, in turn boosting the areas economically. In places like the Bay Area, a simple bridge between San Francisco and Oakland can take an hour and a half off travel time and connect two important cities. They are so incredibly important to this country, so today I wanted to go over the 10 largest bridges in America and go over when they were built, why they were built, and how they affect the country. Before that though, I wanted to quickly ask if you would please consider subscribing to the channel. We make content like this every single week, exploring different geography related topics. So if that's the kind of thing that interests you, please click the subscribe button below. Thank you. So there's one main trend you'll notice in this video, related to the regions and areas we see these bridges located in. Seven of the 10 bridges I'll be talking about today are located in a swampy region, specifically the Gulf Coast region and especially southeastern Louisiana where there's a lot of population in a very swampy area, which requires bridges for major infrastructural purposes to connect the city across the nearby swamps. These areas make bridges a lot easier to build at long distances because of the shallow water. Some of these are basically just elevated highways with a bit of water underneath, but they're still technically bridges. So without further ado, let's get into the list and start out with our number 10, the General W.K. Wilson Jr. Bridge in Alabama. So this bridge is located to the north of Mobile, on the crossing of the Mobile River by Interstate 65. It's six miles long, spanning across the expansive swampy region formed by the river. Constructed in a two-year span between 1978 and 1980, the bridge was opened and served a pretty important purpose of connecting the Mobile Metro to the northeast over a wide area of swamp. This bridge is more commonly known as the Dolly Parton Bridge because apparently the bridge has red warning lights on top of the parallel support arches, which when combined with the shape of the supporting arches, when approaching from certain directions, it looks like Dolly Parton or something. I'm not entirely sure what the thought process there was, but it's a funny name, and it's a lot easier to say than the General W.K. Wilson Jr. Bridge. Next up on our list, we move to a more commonly known bridge, the Seven Mile Bridge in Florida. Located in the Florida Keys, this bridge connects the East Keys to the West Keys at a distance of not 7 miles, but 6.7, so a little under. Originally, this was a railroad route until 1935, when it was damaged in a hurricane. From there, it was sold to the U.S. government, who converted it to an automobile route. Now, that means it was very thin, so as the tourism industry started to flourish in the Keys, and automobiles became more popular, they were forced to build a new bridge over the gap. This new bridge, completed in 1972, is still just two lanes but is more modern and safe. You can actually still walk on the old Seven Mile Bridge as it's now used as a heritage trail. And right in the middle, a tree grew on it. So that's pretty cool. Next up, we move to the only Western bridge on this list. Located in the Bay Area, this would be the San Mateo Hayward Bridge, more commonly known as the San Mateo Bridge. This seven mile bridge connects the middle part of the Bay Area. Originally, a lift bridge was opened in 1929 by a private company. This bridge was tolled and actually didn't see all that much traffic for the first few decades of its life. But as the years went on, road and marine traffic increased, and in 1967, a new bridge was opened to traffic. The bridge is located in an incredibly dangerous area for earthquakes, and in fact the bridge was closed in 1989 in the wake of the Loma Prieta earthquake. Though this is still a concern, extensive seismic retrofitting took place between 1997 and 2000 to protect the bridge against damage caused by earthquakes. Next up we have the Jubilee Parkway in Alabama, where we move back to a sort of sister bridge to the Dolly Parton Bridge. Located further south on the Mobile River, this one actually comes straight out of the city's downtown, connecting to the east at the edge of the Mobile Bay. At 8 miles long, this bridge was opened in 1978 as a divided highway connector over the bridge. I've got a couple interesting things to mention here. First of all, there's the diamond interchange midway through the bridge with US-98, something you don't commonly see that I thought was pretty cool. Secondly, there have been extended talks of expanding the parkway to a total of 8 lanes in addition to a connecting cable-stayed bridge that would bypass a tunnel on the west side of the bridge. This has been a controversial idea due to its economic and visual effect on the city. First of all, it would be the second tallest structure in the entire city, which may overshadow the city's skyline. But secondly, the clearance of the bridge would hamper large ships and cruise ships from accessing the Port of Mobile. 
Next up, we have the Louisiana Highway 1 bridge, also known as the Gateway to the Gulf Expressway. This bridge, being the first of our list in southeastern Louisiana, connects Grand Isle and Port Fortune to the mainland. At 8.26 miles long, this is an interesting bridge connecting to a very peculiar area, cut off from the rest of the state and located on the edge of the Louisiana swamp. Grand Isle on its own has always been interesting to me, but the fact that there's such a long bridge connecting to a 1,000 population community like this is probably the most interesting part about it. This is a very new bridge completed in 2011, likely more related to the port than the small city of Grand Isle. Next up, we return to Louisiana for the I-10 Bonnet Carré Spillway Bridge, located just outside the New Orleans metro to the west, connecting I-10 into the city from the swampy areas going outside of the city. The bridge is 11 miles long and mostly just passes over wetlands, but also goes along the coast of Lake Pontchartrain for a small portion. Open in 1972, the bridge is yet another one with a major interchange located along it. Being in such a flat region, the highest ramp gives you a great view of the wetlands, as well as the New Orleans skyline in the distance. Next up, we move to the only bridge on this list located in the northeast, the Chesapeake Bay Bridge Tunnel. Now, this is more arguable, because the distance of the bridge does also include the tunnel portions, and the longest portion of continuous bridge is only 5.75 miles long. But including the whole thing, it's a full 17.8 miles long, making it the fourth longest bridge in the U.S., the bridge serves as an important connector between the Hampton Roads Metro and the Delmarva Peninsula, creating a route that would otherwise be impassable without a ferry, unless you'd rather take the near 8-hour trip up through DC to the next bridge. Next we move into the top 3, which are all located in southeast Louisiana. First up, we have the Atchafalaya Basin Bridge, located to the west of Baton Rouge. This bridge extends 18 miles across the swampy landscape of the Atchafalaya River. This is another crossing on I-10, opened in 1973. Accidents frequently occur on the two river crossings, as they are both very narrow and lack shoulders. This is a major problem because the basin is very sparsely inhabited, and as I just said, there aren't any shoulders, so it can really mess with traffic when it does happen. Next we have the second largest bridge in the U.S., the Manshack Swamp Bridge. Located just west of the New Orleans metro, but this time stretching to the north, along the west coast of Lake Pontchartrain. This is an incredibly swampy area in between two lakes, and so the fact that they managed to complete this at all is very impressive. At 23 miles long, it just misses the title of the longest bridge in the U.S. It does arguably take the title of longest non-toll bridge in the entire world, as well as the longest bridge in the interstate system. So on to our number one. Staying in Louisiana, we have the Lake Pontchartrain Causeway. At a crazy 24 miles, this bridge runs straight down the middle of Lake Pontchartrain, coming out of the New Orleans metro to the north and connecting across the open water to Chinchuba and Covington. Now, unlike the other Louisiana bridges, this one's not over a swamp, but over the large lake. And even though the water is fairly shallow, it still makes the idea of this bridge much more impressive. Opened in 1956, going southbound, and 1969, going northbound, the bridge is more historic than any other Louisiana one, with the idea going back as far as 1930. This bridge highly boosted the economies in communities on Lake Pontchartrain's North Shore by cutting 50 minutes off travel time into New Orleans. So that's the list for today. This should help your knowledge of bridges in the U.S. and show you why the most important and longest ones were built. Maybe at some point we'll see some new bridges added to this list, but for now, that's our top 10. Thanks for watching. Thank you to the members this week, Kazen Silo, Boss King Inc., Uncouver, Pol Pot's Pie Hole, Blang, Christopher DeAngelis, JL, Darkbird, Obigrad, Elijah Pass, Big Pasty, Jeremy Crone, Wolfling73, Snyder Schwine, Florida Jake, Somnum Woods, Stormy Knight, Nikita Martinov, Haystack, Benjamin Whiting, Ryan Devins, Hazev the Wolf, Dominic Psyche, Rosebud4, and Bryzen. I appreciate all of you so much. You really help out the channel. Um, if you want to become a member, the link is down in the description below as well as next to the subscribe button. It's just a way to give a little extra money to the channel if you appreciate the content. It all goes into my savings for college and a car and stuff. So you're just helping me out as a person if you appreciate the content. Thank you.